Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's video, I'm going to have a brief look at the 60-day cycles that we've been looking at over the last few weeks and have a look at exactly what's happening within the framework of these 60-day cycles and what they're showing could happen in the next few days and weeks. I'll also have a look at the chart patterns that are developing and the levels to look out for. And finally, I'm going to go through a particular candlestick pattern and formation that will actually save you a ton of money if you know exactly what you're looking for and what to do afterwards. So if that sounds interesting, grab yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. Before I begin, I want to just actually say that you may have noticed a lot of people have left the crypto space. If you look at a lot of the videos made by YouTubers like myself, our views for each video has been going steadily down. And that is very understandable in a very strong, dominant, brutal bear market. However, those who stay in the space, those who can see the bigger picture, those who know that at the end of every bear market, there are great opportunities which will be handsomely rewarded if you take a one year, two year, three year view, then those are the ones I call smart investors. So well done to everybody who's watching this now, who is still interested in knowing exactly what's happening because we are now waiting for a turnaround anytime from over here. Yes, there may be a little leg down to the 12,000 before we go up, but there's also a very strong chance that we don't do that and we actually go from where we are. And that's why having a core position at current levels should pay you very handsomely going forward. Okay, so on with the show. But before I do that, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. Nothing should be taken as financial advice. So please do your due diligence and wider research before you make any important investment decisions. We're gonna start off today on the daily chart here. And these are the cycles that I've been showing you. So these are the last four cycles. So I've taken it from this point here. If you remember, the market came back down from the 48,000 and we had a big run down over here. And then we got very strong support at this point. And this point marked the end of the 60 day cycle over here. And since then, these are the cycles that I've been following. So from this point to this end of cycle low over here was about 62 days. The next cycle was about 56 days and the current cycle, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that it ended here on the 9th of November with this fall of the FTX scandal. So we're now looking forward into the next few cycles. So I've marked them up for you. The red line is the 60 days from this current level here and the white dotted vertical line here is the halfway point between these two cycles. So this point here on the 9th of December will be the midpoint of the current cycle, which ends around about the 8th of January. And then the 60 day cycle starts here and the white line here is the midpoint of this next cycle that we're going to get into. So currently what we've got is the overhang of the FTX scandal that we had over here. So all this price action over here is the culmination of the after effects of what's happened with the FTX scandal. And the question is, can the market fall further from this? Of course it can. We can go all the way down to 12,000 if we break this level here now at 15 and a half. And unfortunately, because of the FTX fallout here, it looks to me anyway, it's just my opinion. Please remember, I'm just giving you my perspective on this. Obviously anything can happen, but my perspective is that whenever you get big fall like this, a big fall like this, what you do have is a period of consolidation that's required to bring the trust back into the market and bring confidence from investors so that they can trust the market to put their money in there. So currently what we've got is an expectation that this is probably gonna be the high for the next few cycles over here. And within this cycle, the danger is that we could fall out at any time but down to the $12,000 mark. And the reason I'm showing you the RSI and the on-balance volume is that there is a bullish divergence currently on those two indicators. So when we came down to the 15.5 over here, we came also down to the 15.4 over here. So we made a lower low at that point. However, if you look at the RSI, we've made a higher low over here. And similarly, with the 
on balance volume, always remember that the on balance volume is far more accurate than the RSI. This is the accumulative version of an increase in the demand for Bitcoin. So the buying has to be greater than the previous buying for this to move higher. So there is an increase in demand on the on balance volume. So currently what we've got is a bullish divergence to the upside and this is also reflected in the RSI. So what can we expect with the Bitcoin price going in these cycles here? So how do we use these cycles? Well, what they do do is to give us a framework of what we can expect in the next 30 days, 60 days, etc. So currently, as you can see, we've bounced off this point here a 15.4 and I mentioned in the last few videos that I'm expecting a relief rally here now because of this expectation that the 60 day cycle ended here. The way I'm using it is that I'm using the 30 days as a marker that we can expect a rally up to these points here. Now if the market jumps up very very quickly well before the 30 days then we know that this point here at 21 and a half becomes possible because we're still not got to the midpoint of the cycle where we expect the fall to start for the end of the next 60 day cycle around this point here. And if this is a very slow increase to the 30 days, then we know that there's a level here, goes all the way back here, which is at the 18,200 level. So if we get to that point around the 18,000, and we're around the 30 day midpoint of this cycle, then we know that more than likely with a higher degree of probability that we're going to top out over here. And while everybody else might be expecting for us to go to these levels, the probabilities are that we're going to not go to those levels, but actually start making our way down. And then you can act accordingly in terms of your trading. But if this is already looking like it's fizzling out, and starts to make a way down, and starts closing below the previous day's candles, then it may well be that we've topped out well before the $18,000 mark. Certainly, the tops of these candles here at around about 17.2 is what I'm expecting as a minimum here. So my expectation is that if we can get above these wicks over here, this slight neckline, then there is a very good chance that we can make it to the $18,200 mark here. And if we can do that before the 30-day cycle, then there is an opportunity to go above to the 21 and a half. But at that point, I would be expecting a fall back down into the cycle. And then I would be looking at whether we create a higher low over here, or does it go back down and create a lower low? At which point, once we've broken the 15 and a half, there's a very high probability that we're gonna go all the way down to the $12,000 mark. So there's a lot to consider, but these are the levels in the short term, 17,200, we need to get above these wicks here. And depending on where we are at that point, within these cycles, this is a good framework to work out where we are and what could possibly happen. So with the bullish divergence, I would be expecting the next few weeks for the market to be going up. And always remember that there's the CPI data coming out December the 13th or the 14th, and there's a decision to be made on the interest rates around that time. So that could actually play into a rising market because the expectation for the CPI is rather positive and the expectation for the interest rate rise is that we're going to have a 50 basis points increase rather than the 75 basis points increase that we've had over the last many months now. And that could really provide the fuel for the market to go to these levels at around about the 21 and a half. And remember the midpoint is around the 9th or 10th of December around here. And then the CPI data comes along on the 13th and the 14th for the interest rate decision. So we'll see what happens here. So keep an eye on those important dates, which is going to affect the Bitcoin price. Okay, so moving on to the chart patterns that are developing here, which we really need to keep our focus on. So what we've got is we've got the top out here at 69. We've had this dominant trend all the way down here, which we've been following for the last 12 months. Now what we've got is a down sloping channel in this manner here which we're now operating in here. We've created our tops over here at 25,200 and at 21 and a half over here. So this line, which has found support all along here, and we fell below it over here, this is gonna provide a very strong resistance when we make our way up to these points here. And currently we're making a descending triangle over here 
which we'll have a look at closely very shortly. But these points tell us that these are very important levels of resistance when we come back up again. So make a note of this. So this is the level around 21 and a half. Highly likely that we're going to get rejected when we come up to here, somewhere along the line over here. And certainly this point here is going to be proving to be very difficult to get past. So there's a very good point of being rejected on these two points here. So let's have a close look at this point here of what we can expect in the next few days. So that's the top of the channel line here and the bottom of the channel line here support. And this is what we've been forming, a descending channel over here. And some would draw this as a flat line. If we change the color of that, then you can see exactly what we're doing here. We're meandering between these points. And currently we've been rejected at this point here at 16,700. But we've only got two points at the moment. So this point could easily move up to this point here, like I said, at 17.2. And then we'd have to move this line to over here. So they're always interchangeable, but it just gives us a framework to work in. So the two levels to really look out for is, obviously we've got this level here, and I've marked it with this dotted line, is the 18,200, which comes to here. If we can get above this point here somehow, and use that as a base, then we know that this is probably, with a very, very high degree of probability, the bottom is in at 15.5 or 15.4, whichever one you want to use. But if we break this level here down to the 15.4, should we break that level, then there is a very high degree of probability that we're going to go all the way down to the $12,000 mark. So these are the two levels that we really need to keep an eye on. And if you were trading, you'd wait on the long side to get above the 18,000. And if you were shorting the market, you'd wait for a break to the low side here. Okay, finally, I'm going to have a look at some candlesticks and candlestick patterns that will save you a ton of money so you know exactly where the market can top out or start a reversal to the upside. So these developments over here were actually giving us a lot of strong clues as to what was to follow after these top outs here. And especially over here, which I'll just go into. So this is the one I wanted to mention first. And this is that, this is what they call, I mean, some would call this a gravestone doji candle. And what this is really telling us is that when the price came up to this level here, at around about the 24 and a half, it was rejected very strongly to this point. And that should be a warning sign whenever you see a long wick at the top after a big move to the upside, that's really telling us, beware that the market is about to top out. So as traders, how would you play that? The way I normally play this is that you take a line at the top of this wick and you basically say, right, I'm going to get out over here at this point at the close of the candle, which is at 23,200. So you make a channel at the top of the wick and at the bottom of the wick. And then you wait for a resolution for the price to tell you what it wants to do. If it breaks above this wick here and closes above it, then you know that the direction it wants to take is to the upside. But if it actually closes below this, which it did over here, then you know that there is a high probability that it's going to go all the way down here. So you can save yourself a ton of money by knowing exactly how this candle is going to direct the price of the following candles. Similar thing happened over here when we got these two candles. So instead of just one, we got two over here. So again, that was another strong sign that we were gonna go down. Not only did we have a gravestone doji candle over here, let's have a closer look at this. So not only did we have a gravestone doji candle here, which is telling you that there's a strong rejection of prices above this level here, which was that 25,000. So as soon as you see this, you put your channel at the top of the wick and at the bottom of the wick here and wait for the price to resolve what it wants to do. Obviously, if you see a close above this wick, then you know that the price wants to move higher, then you can jump on board at that point. But if it moves below this, then what you do is you just ride it down. So like this candle broke the bottom support of this wick here. So you knew that the market wants to go lower and hence we got this move to the downside. But another thing was actually telling us that this has now topped out and that is what we call the outside bar candle. And what that really means is that if you look at this candle here, 
Once you've got out at this point, when this closes at around about the 23,900 and you're waiting for the resolution, you keep looking at the candles and seeing exactly what they're telling you. So when we got this candle here, the following candle, as you can see, the top of the wick and the bottom of the wick totally engulf top and the bottom of the wick of the previous candle over here. So this candle is an outside bar candle and you normally get these at a reversal point at the top of a trend like that. But not only did we get one outside bar candle, but this candle itself was engulfed by this candle at the top and the bottom so that the high and the bottom of this candle was higher and lower than this candle here. So what we got was a double outside bar candle playing out after a gravestone doji candle over here. And those three signs told us that this market is on the way down over here. So that was a warning sign here of those candlestick patterns which led to all this down here. And it doesn't work just in the crypto space. If you're investing in other stocks and shares, and this is the Apple stock on the daily chart, look what happened here. We had a big run up to this point over here and this trend was ended by this inside bar candle here. This, is, this green candle was an inside bar candle to this small candle so that the upside surge was ended by this candle here. And this was followed by the outside bar candle. The high and the low of that was greater than the one previous to it. So this works across all charts. So just understanding gravestone doji candles and outside bar candles can save you a ton of money by being out of the market when the price is going down like this. So the way to use it obviously is that when you see a big trend like this and at the top of that trend you see these formations of gravestone dojis or outside bar candles, you know with a higher degree of probability that this is what it's going to do. And you protect yourself by making sure you put a line at the top of the wick so that if it does break above there, you can then go long again. But you protect your downside by doing this as well. And obviously it works at the bottom of a trend as well. If you look over here, this trend down, this green candle over here is an outside bar candle to the previous red candle. And that marked the beginning of a big massive trend to the upside here. So just a very simple brief understanding of these candlesticks and the candlestick patterns can actually save you a lot of money and actually make you a lot of money whether you want to go long or short. Okay, so we'll leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. And if you have any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.